1992, calculate the molar solubility of SnOH2 in a buffer solution containing equal concentrations of NH3 and NH4+. Okay, so in order for this question to work out, we had to find out the corresponding K values for the compounds that they gave us. Now, whenever they're asking for the molar solubility, this compound is, you know, a saturated solution. It's, we're talking about solubility. That's the solubility product. So I went in the back of the textbook to find out what the KSP value for SnOH2 is. It's 3.0 times 10 to the negative 22nd, a uh, negative 27th. Now, they're including that with the buffer solution. So buffers, remember last chapter, buffers are when you have acids and bases, right? You have a conjugate pair of a weak acid with its weak conjugate base. And that's what they gave us here. They told us that we had NH3 and NH4+. Since the NH4 plus has one more hydrogen, this would be classified as the acid and the NH3 would be classified as the base. Maybe I'll just write that down here. Okay, so I went into the back of the textbook to find out what the Ka or Kb value was. I did find a Kb value for ammonia, which is NH3, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, let's first write out the two equations that go together with these K values. Let's start off with the KB, right? Remember, in last chapter, if you have a KB value, that means you're starting off with the base and you're gonna make your conjugate acid. So we have NH3. With bases, you always add them in water because that's the aqueous solution. And then this will dissociate, right? Equilibrium, because we're dealing with K values. The base turns into the conjugate acid, so that's NH four plus. And then if you're starting off with the base, remember the H2O is the acid, it loses the hydrogen. So this is OH minus. Just know that the NH3 is aqueous. The water is the liquid. NH4 plus, since it has a charge that's aqueous and the OH minus that also has a charge. So that's aqueous. And then I'll just bring this value down here. Okay. So maybe I'll just get rid of this. Now let's write the other equation. For KSPs, remember you're starting off with that compound and breaking it into its two ions. So in this case, we have SN, OH2, that's the solid, and this will be dissociating, equilibrium, double arrow, into the two ions. The break for SNOH2 is where the tin is and the hydroxide, right? Hydroxide is a uh, polyatomic, it never you know, breaks up between them. So this would be SN plus OH. And I kind of just gave you the charge. I mean, we see it here, right? OH is always a negative one charge. And then we can use the subscript to just go back to say, oh, okay, SN was a plus two charge or a two plus. Balance this equation. There were two hydroxides. So I do have to put a two in front of here. Um, and then both of these are charges, so that would be aqueous, okay? And now I'm gonna just drag this KSP value with over here, and then I can get rid of this. All right, so the end question is asking for that molar solubility. So this is probably gonna be the last thing that we do because they do, gave, they do give us more information on the buffer. Now, what is the similarity between these two reactions, right? What component is the same in these two equations? Yeah, you guessed it. It's the OH minus. That's how we're going to link together the first comp, the first reaction to the second one, because they both have OH minuses. So in the beginning, I can probably find out that OH minus concentration. So let's just move this down for now. And we're going to just be focusing on this guy up here. Okay. So all they said was they said that we had equal concentrations. They did not tell us what we had. So just make up a number. It just has to be the same. If you have equal concentrations of NH3 and NH4+, I don't know, maybe we have one molarity 
for the NH3, and maybe I'll put that in blue to show that it's a base. We have one molarity for NH3, and if you say that you have one molarity for NH3, you got one molarity for the NH4. Remember, the liquid water does not get included in your KB expression, and we're solving for the OH minus. So I don't know what that is. I'm going to label it as X, and it has to go with the uh, uh, coefficients. There is only one OH, so that's just X. And yeah, I just want to, you know, I just want to make sure that this, you know, we don't think that that's the whole thing gets canceled out. Okay, so let's go for it. So KB equals, if we just need a refresher, products over reactants. So in this case, it would be NH4 plus times OH minus divided by NH3. We have one up top, one on the bottom, an X value, and 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So if we just plug in those values, it would be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals one on top, or one times X divided by one equals the KB. The idea was that since they were equal concentrations, these cancel out, and you're just left with X equals. So X equals 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's molarity, and that's what the OH minus concentration was. So I can say that the OH minus concentration is the 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. And that is now going to be the link between that buffer and the molar solubility for this one. So if I just drag this now up, right? We're now done with this part. So maybe I could just put this whole thing here, right? And now, if this is what you're starting with, that's the number that comes over here. Don't get tricked. Just because there's a two here, we are not timesing this by two. We don't miraculously have like two times the concentration. So whatever it was here, that's the number that goes here. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And we don't know what this is, so that's the variable. Label it as X. There was one SN. So this has to be a one, right? Or a one X, just X. And remember, no solids allowed in your KSP. So a big X for that. Now let's just write out the KSP equation. KSP equals concentration of just the products because solids are not allowed. So it'd be SN two plus times OH minus, but since there's a two here, I have to raise that value to the two. KSP is 3.0 times 10 to the negative 27th. SN is the X and the OH is the 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, so let's plug it all in, right? So we have 3.0 times 10 to the negative 27th equals X times 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and that's squared. So we can just do 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth squared. That's 3.24 times 10 to the negative tenth. So I'm just going to erase this and say, okay, that's 3.24 times 10 to the negative tenth. And now just solve for x. Divide on both sides by that value, the 3.24 times 10 to the negative 10th, 3.24 times 10 to the negative 10th. This cancels out, and now we're just left with x. So three times 10 to the negative 27th divided by 3.24 times 10 to the negative 10th. And I guess we'll do two sig figs, right? 9.3? times 10 to the negative 18th, and that's molarity. 
Now, when they're asking for molar solubility, just know that when you're dealing with KSPs, that X value is the molar solubility. Meaning that even though this was not included in the KSP, there's still a molarity there. It's just not used for equilibrium values. And if we just pull this away, right, there was one SNOH2. So the ratio is one X. That's why it's always that number. So the molar solubility would be 9.3 times 10 to the negative 18th molarity of that compound, SNOH2. And that is your final answer. Not bad. Okay. So that's it, guys. I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I hope you guys have a great day. Let's keep studying hard. And good luck on your tests. And I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.